What's up everybody, it's Dr. Brett Jones of The Source Chiropractic here in Tucson, Arizona. And today we're joined by Natasha who has an acute onset of Bell's Palsy. And I wanna do this video, and I actually wanna do a series of videos to track this because I believe a lot of people, one, don't have a great understanding of why it occurs, or they don't ask the right questions to actually get to the cause of what's happening. And so, Natasha, can you explain that this basically just happened a couple days ago, is that correct? Yes. And so the onset, so we're Saturday, Saturday today, the onset was Thursday? Um, initially, it's not feeling well, but the yeah. numbness of my face started around the weekend. Okay, so around the weekend, the last couple of days, uh, woke up and started to notice the paralysis uh, happening on the left side of her face. Went to the hospital yesterday? Yes. And went to the hospital. I want to I share what happened in the hospital and what they ended up prescribing. And so they go in, and I, and I actually like the series of the tests they did. When somebody's experiencing Bell's palsy, um, it can mimic some of the symptoms of stroke. And so what they went ahead and did was a CT scan just to rule that out. They ruled out stroke right away. And then from there, they said, okay, well, if we roll out stroke, then we have Bell's palsy. Now, Natasha had uh, a series of potential viral infections. And so one of the thoughts of the causes of Bell's palsy is it's a post-viral stress disorder, um, which creates uh, inflammation of cranial nerve seven. And when that has a level of inflammation, then we can experience a level of paralysis of the facial nerve. And so right now we're looking at the upper part and the lower part having some level of facial paralysis. But let's talk about what was prescribed. They prescribed two main things. One is acyclovir, which is an antiviral. Um, uh, however, it's not a specific antiviral. And uh, it's been known to uh, have a side effect of suppressing immune system, uh, which we know is what's currently going on. So most likely the cause is stress, right? And then pathogen. The other prescription is methylprednisolone, which um, is uh, basically a corticosteroid, uh, which is also a known immune suppressant. So if you start taking corticosteroid, and the primary reason to take corticosteroid is to decrease inflammation, one, you're not getting to the cause of why the inflammation is there, right? So you say, oh, the cause is viral. Well, guess what? There's a lot of people that are being exposed more than, more than likely, right, to influenza A or B, right, um, being exposed to an adenovirus or being exposed to a cold virus that never developed Bell's palsy. So we gotta stop pointing the fig finger at the virus and start to understand what in our own system has the inability to adapt to this virus, which is creating an abnormal stress pattern and an abnormal inflammation pattern. Now, one of a, the most common causes is actually a mechanical disturbance. I'm gonna say that again, not a chemical disturbance, right? And that's why they prescribe you the shit right here. The most common cause is a mechanical disturbance. Why? Cranial nerve seven exits what's called the stylomastoid foramen. So the mastoid process is on the occiput, right? So going right here and then just anterior to that and deep, you're gonna have the stylomastoid foramen. And so usually when we see Bell's palsy clients, they're gonna have a disturbance of either the mandible or TMJ and the upper cervical complex. Because you have to think about this. Why would my body have an inflammation response that mainly goes to one side? It's usually due to a lack of stagnancy due to a mechanical disturbance causing interference to the flow of fluids, which again can then cause the buildup of inflammation in one specific area, giving us the result of what we see as Bell's palsy. So let's take a current look of what's happening with the facial paralysis in this area. So Natasha, if you can go ahead and get a, a, a close in on Natasha's face here. Can you go ahead and attempt to smile for us? All right, and then can about raised eyebrows. And you said one of the biggest things that you noticed was actually when you went to like drink and like kind of pucks your, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and do it. There you go. All right, so this is the current facial process we have on the left side. It is a left side disturbance. And so, as a chiropractor, what do we do? We check out the neck, right? One, as soon as I put my hands anywhere near, I could feel the heat. You know, heat radiates off the body. So even right there, we have heat. So we have a lot of heat in the forehead. We have a lot of heat in the upper neck. We have um, some heat at the TMJ on the left side. So I wanna check TMJ as a primary. Go ahead and open the jaw. Good, and closed jaw, let's see that one again. Go ahead and open. Can you open faster? Good, open. 
Okay, so there's one, you could tell there's a difficulty in opening. Two, she has a deviation towards the left side when she's opening. So I think TMJ disturbance is one of the things that's happening here. Go ahead and lay on your back here for me. All right. So we're gonna check this again. Go ahead and open. So now you can even see it way, way easier. You can even see the angle of the jaw that's happening. You even see that the nose is actually tilting slightly to the right. And that's because we're losing muscle tone, you know, along the masseter and some of the other areas um, that are gonna cause uh, the facial paralysis. So because we have more muscle tone on the right, it's even gonna pull tip of nose over to the left. So again, one more time, open. Got, I got TMJ on the left side. So that's gonna be one of the primary things that we are going to address. I'm also gonna go and check the upper neck. We checked rotation, you know, pre-video. Uh, she was limited in rotation to the right. I'm actually picking up a posterior atlas on the left side, which we're gonna adjust utilizing the knee chest. And so first we're actually gonna adjust the TMJ. And so I like to always link TMJ with a certain uh, cervical vertebra. Uh, they often work in unison. So go ahead and get an open. So for her it's C5. And I'm gonna see where it starts to lock up. So go ahead and slowly open. Okay, it's about uh, two thirds open. So give me only that two thirds open, keep going. So there's your TMJ. Again, we say uh, Bell's palsy has a mechanical disturbance cause. Why else would the inflammation start to pull in one side or the other, right? You're, you're talking about a level of stagnancy. Health is a flow, right? So when we have a decrease in health, we have a decrease in flow of again, talking about flow of information, you know, through our nervous system, a flow of lymphatics, a flow of our circulatory system, you know, through the blood, um, a flow of the fluids of our body. So that actually feels way better already. I'm gonna go ahead and actually check some of the sinuses. You know, if we had, you know, viral infections back to back, then that can cause a disturbance of the sinuses. So here we have the, the maxillary sinus, we're gonna check the frontal sinus, some of the etmoid. It's actually feeling all pretty good. Checking the temples. We definitely have a stuck, um, what we call a sphenoid bone on the left side. So we're gonna start to open up sphenoid. Good. All right, and now we wanna go ahead and address the upper cervical complex through a technique called uh, upper cervical knee chest adjustment. So you're gonna go ahead and come with me. We're gonna have you go over to this table. We're gonna be adjusting a left posterior atlas. We're gonna do a little, we're gonna go this direction. Got it. Okay, so you're gonna, knees are gonna go there. Your chest is gonna go here. Head's gonna to turn to the left. So scoot down the table a little bit, right there. There, your arms sink to your side. Palms go up. Spread your knees so they're hip distance apart. Right there, turn your palms up. There we go. So this is a specific style of a chiropractic adjustment, very effective for just addressing the upper cervical neck. Uh, it's called upper cervical knee chest technique. It was created by the developer of chiropractic, BJ Palmer. Uh, got really, really popular in the early 1900s and is still a prevalent technique today, again, for addressing the upper neck in a very specific way. So as I'm checking in here, going to Atlas, we have a ton of swelling uh, and edema all right here, so it's puffy, watery fluid that should not be there, and we want that to clear. So I'm gonna make a connection right there to the posterior arch of Atlas, and I'm gonna slide my Pisi form in, and then we want to address this posterior to anterior going this way. So I'm actually gonna step over here, we're gonna adjust through this way. Got it, boom. Come back up when you're ready. And then you're gonna come, how is that for you? Big one, huh? Amazing. <laughs> yep. All right, so come back to the table over here when you're ready. And then you go um, face up again. We're gonna double check everything. So doctors, people, we need to ask better questions. You know, I think one of the most unfortunate pieces of health today in our society is that we just accept what the medical side says about things and don't ask enough questions. And so hopefully that these videos allow us to all ask better questions so that we can get better results. 
Um, unfortunately, what happens is again, you go to the Western medical side, they mainly will give you things to try to address the symptoms, but never address the cause. We, ask that, we have to ask, why is the inflammation there? And it's not just because of a viral cause, because if you have a viral cause, the majority of people don't get Bell's palsy. So there's more going on here than just, oh, a viral cause that created inflammation, right? There was a level of stress in the system that needs to be dealt with. And there was a mechanical disturbance, um, which was not allowing the fluids to flow. All right, that's feeling really, really, really good. I'm gonna have you sit back up. So we're gonna go ahead and trap Natasha's process. Again, this is day two. Go ahead and scoot forward again. Let's go ahead and see how we're doing already. All right, let's see, smile. There we go, all right, eyes, uh, bring the eyes open, so the best you can, there we go. And then just go ahead and do the pucker again. <laughs> that's the main one. All right, so that's the main one that we're gonna be tracking throughout her care. But again, we're gonna take the natural approach to this. So supporting her body with the vitamins, the supplements, if you will, but really nature's medicine, which is gonna be in good nourishment, good sleep, recuperation, positive mental attitude, and uh, clearing the mechanical disturbances through amazing chiropractic care. We look forward to seeing you for the next update.